And so we gather here today as a community, community of faith to connect to the sacred, to be able to have a place of refuge, an oasis to be filled with the Word of God and to receive Jesus in the Eucharist. There's a lot of uncertainties, even people coming to Mass, and what are we going to do? Are we going to have the sign of peace? How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? Well, we're gonna... Not in here, okay? Maybe out there, but not in here. Here, we put everything in neutral. Here, we just say, Lord God, just wash over me. Lord God, just give me what I need to hear during this Mass not to put uncertainties, not in here, in the world, whatever is needed out there for us to survive, we do. With the grace of God helping us make the right decisions. But in here, we still have joy. We still give God thanks and praise, especially to receive the Eucharist. In here, we still sing, we still re respond. It was funny, on last, last night's Mass, I was telling the people, I was getting a little frustrated, I was telling the people, you know, respond, sing, because it was kind of a down mood. But then I recognized at the end of Mass, they are responding, they are singing. I just can't hear it because of the mask they have on. <laughs> so, uh, let's plug into the sacred, amen? Let, let, let's not worry. When, when do I put the collection in? Are we going to have the sign of peace? I don't know about this. I don't know. I'm sure a lot of things are going through our heads. My head too. But I figured out last night, I can't let this overwhelm me because we are the example of God's love that will never be taken away. Therefore, during this Mass, let's put it in neutral and let's just give thanks and praise to God. Are there reasons to give thanks and praise to God? Sí, hombre. Yeah, a lot of good reasons. Sometimes we may have those other reasons overshadow the good reasons, but not during Mass. We connect to the sacred, and we celebrate in the loving embrace of our God. All right? Okay? Yeah, y'all don't look too certain. Uh, probably because all I can see is your eyeballs, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, that's better. Okay, we're going to do a new thing. Let's say, if, if, when you say amen, like what he did, he did his eyes like. <laughs> so I can know that's what's really like. We have to have a new way of communicating. Amen? Okay, God bless. We'll begin in one minute. And two seconds. for the entrance in. Mercy. 
In the name of the Son, the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, today's scripture readings, they seem to be so appropriate for what was going on during Jesus' time 2,000 years ago and what's going on in our times. It's as if nothing's ever changed in the world but let's listen to the scripture and see how are we going to be the change in the world as being examples of Christ. For this reason, let's ask for God's mercy, pardon, and peace. Let us choose God. Let us love God by letting go of the things that keeps us from doing that. Let's confess our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotions these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to it in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip. When they heard it and saw the signs he was doing, for unclean spirits, crying out loud in a loud voice, came out many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them that they may, might, might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only, only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and then they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Tremendous or your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all on earth worship and sing praise to you. Sing praise to your name. And come and see the of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river they passed on. Therefore, let us rejoice in Him. He rules by His might forever. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now all you who fear God while I declare what He done for me. Blessed be God who refused me, not my prayer. For oh, his kindness, let all the earth cry out to God with joy. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation 
to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, but do it with the gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because It neither sees nor knows him, but you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you in a little while while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. You don't know how much my heart rejoices in seeing all of you present here in this church and also for all of those who are watching either through Facebook or through our YouTube uh, channel. It is good that you are here and for those people that are outside as well. It's good that we, even though are physically separated spiritually, we are all together. In the days that we live in, many of us are trying to find the truth in the midst of all the noise. 
if you watch the different channels, news channels especially, it just seems like there's certain channels that are battling against each other to get the information out. And we're kind of like stuck in the middle trying to figure out what is the truth in the midst of all of this stuff. And a lot of us, myself, I'm tired of hearing promises. I'm tired of people saying, you know, I promise you this, I promise you that. And, and there's so many empty promises to where I've grown numb of trying to hear the truth out there. If we're honest with ourselves, much of our society, the world, is not ready or willing to accept the truth. And this is the truth. The beauty of God's mercy and love. That's the bottom line. Not just for some. However, this beauty and love that is offered to everyone. You see, our planet and all that lives on it was created by God through love and for love. And yet maybe it is because of our selfishness or the world's Issues, control issues, or just going with the flow of our society, or that we find it difficult to put Jesus as the center of our lives fully and wholeheartedly and live according to God's love and not depend on the world's idea, idea of love. And, and, and I know we all agree, but it's easier for us to agree in here than when we're in line in H-E-B. Nombre, shut up. It gets crazy. A lot of judgmental attitudes, a lot of why aren't you wearing this, why aren't you doing that, why in this and why in that, to where we leave our home scared, afraid. However, that's not the love that God has to offer us. when we don't follow the love of God and the love of the world. We follow the love of the world and it's easy for us to get lonely. We follow the love of the world and this loneliness turns into despair. We fall for the love of the world and this despair turns into not wanting to follow Jesus or doubting God or being upset with God rather than saying, Lord Jesus, what are you trying to tell me personally in the midst of all of this? Now, people, this was the exact same concern that Jesus had in today's gospel reading of St. John. During his last meal, the last discourse meal with his disciples, Jesus knew that he would not always be physically present with them. He knew that his way of love, that his way of compassion, that his way of mercy, that his way of forgiveness, that the world has never experienced fully and wholeheartedly until Jesus came into the world, that the world would not easily accept what he had to offer. Jesus even told the disciples that they must be willing to deny themselves and take up their cross. Jesus knew that the world would find it difficult in putting God, his Father, first and to put others first before material gain, before self-righteousness, before worldly powers. He knew that many in the world we're not ready for him. That's why he was crucified. At this last discourse with his disciples, he knew that he was going to suffer and die, but rise from the dead. And now this is the next step that we get what Jesus is planning for the disciples. We're not ready to know and to love truly is what Jesus knew when he talked to the disciples in today's gospel reading. Some people thought that they were ready to love. However, that love that they thought they had is now being treated, now is being tested, and has found out that that love is the love that the world has to offer and does not fill every need. And so, yes, loneliness, despair, and yes, turning away from God sets in. Jesus, knowing all of this, 
and that he was going to leave his disciples in this world, pointing towards the ascension, being prepared for Pentecost, giving the Holy Spirit. He promised an advocate. This is the first time we hear in scriptures about the advocate. He promised another advocate to be with us always. We who strive for love of him, who strive to keep his commandments, Jesus is saying that we're not alone. Keep striving. We know this advocate is the Holy Spirit. Now, I have a question for all of us here. And the question is to make a point. Have you ever tried, and I'm sure a lot of you have, probably some of you parents are looking at me like, right, Father, have you ever tried that? Have you ever tried cons consoling a crying child? I mean, a crying child, you know, either a baby or, or one of your children having a fit. And if you've noticed that if you don't, if you no longer try to respond to the child, it only intensifies because the child wants some kind of attention, not knowing what that, that child is crying for sometimes. And the more that we don't respond to the child, the more intense the crying can become. And it may seem that the child will never stop crying. And sometimes we try to do this or do that. We try to make them smile. We try to make them happy. We try, but no matter how much we try to make them laugh or smile, it doesn't take care of the need of why they're crying. Often, often, not always, it takes just a few moments to hold a child tightly close to your own body's heartbeat so the child can feel a sense of security or perhaps rocking the child on the rocking chair or singing a smooth melody, maybe giving the child some food or drink and suddenly the child quiets down or often falls asleep. I remember when I was a child, my grandmother, my mom, they would rock me on the rocking chair uh, when, I was, when I would cry and have a fit last month. When I would cry... <laughs> and have a fit, uh, they would rock me on the rocking chair, and they would sing the famous baby song. Do y'all know the baby song? Roo, roo, roo. And to this day, I love rocking on the rocking chair because it gives me a sense of comfort. The crisis of the crying child has been stopped or averted. Yes, you see, it's the same thing with the Holy Spirit, the Advocate. All is well when you're in the loving arms of the Holy Spirit, the Counselor, the Consoler, the Comforter, the one in whom we're called to rest in, the one we're called that all of us have in us. I remember... When I was in Washington, D.C., I was, I was preparing to defend my dissertation uh, with the faculty and with the students, and it was the night before defending my dissertation, and I was so anxious and so worried and concerned, and then there was a flyer there in our school that mentioned that there was going to be a healing service, so I went to the healing service the night before, and I was a priest already. Uh, the night before, and I, and I went to the healing service. I didn't wear my, clear, my clerical uh, garb. I just went in with like everybody else. And then it was time to go to the altar and to be prayed over by the priests and the deacons. And so I was watching people fall down, and I said, I'm not going to fall down. I'm not going to fall down. I don't care. I'm not going to fall down. And here's Thetical Father being Thetical again, being in control. I'm not going to fall down. I don't know, they get you and they push you. I know that's what happens. That's what happens. And I was there, and there was a whole crowd of people, and it was my turn. And I was looking up and stuff, and then the deacon placed his hand on me and prayed over me. And I fell down. But that was the best rest that I've had in a long time. Only three other times in my life have I felt like that. Completely restful. Completely not feeling in control. As if, as, as if I was floating on clouds. It, it, it was peaceful. You see, this is what the Holy Spirit does for us. 
And Jesus promised his disciples this advocate, this Holy Spirit, because he anticipated his ascension. It is this advocate, the Holy Spirit, who hears our cries for help, who strengthens us to follow Jesus on his ways, even when the world does not understand. Just like the disciples who were with Jesus before the ascension, we are all called to do as Jesus did and to know that we are not alone. We may feel timid at times or feel fearful or even unsure about living as a follower of Jesus out there. It's easy to live Jesus in here, but once we go out there, for some reason, a switch turns on for some of us, not all of us. The switch turns on of defensiveness. The switch turns on of I'm not going to be manipulated. The switch turns on that I'm not going to be used. The switch turns on that i got to be in control. And Jesus says we cannot be tempted that way. We can't go with the flow with what society is trying to mold us into. We are to go with the flow in which God is molding us into we need to stand up for what we know is right. We need to stand up to truth. What is that truth? Love and mercy and forgiveness. We might even be shattered or broken by the storms of life. Still, we have hope in the risen Lord. The strength of the Holy Spirit's healing and rest and the assurance that God is with us, especially when the circumstances of life and living as people of faith is difficult and challenging. These are the times that St. Peter tells us in the second reading. We must be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks for the reason for your hope. That we must be ready to articulate why we have hope. Those who do not have hope or have a relationship with Jesus may not understand where our hope comes from or where our strength comes from. And not that we have strength all the time or hope all the time, but we have that reservoir that we can tap into when we feel we're pushed up against the wall, when we feel, remember I'm saying feel, not know, when we feel that we have nowhere to turn, but we know we have Jesus. The world might even think that our reliance on God is misguided, and say that our faith is nothing more than wishful thinking. There's a lot of people think like that about us Catholics, us Christians, or that our faith is blind because we should only depend on science, not faith, for all things. And this is a huge political battle right now, using the phrase, they're not thinking about science, they're not thinking about science. If you hear that, read Faith and Reason, the encyclical from St. John Paul II, who basically explains faith and reason goes together. Science and faith goes together. It's not in conflict with each other. Yet, it is the most challenging moments in our lives when we hold on with hope in Jesus that we have the opportunity to be witnesses of God's enduring love, mercy, and strength for everyone, not just for some. We all have it in us. We all have it by virtue of our baptism, which was completed in our confirmation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We all have the power of the Holy Spirit resting, comforting us to have the strength to do God's will. We just need to know it. There's the story about a bride who was getting ready to get married and uh, her groom was there and the bride and, the, and the, her husband was in the back of the church. And then all of a sudden, she whispers to her father, I don't think I can do this. She whispers to her father right before walking down the aisle to marry this man. 
She says, I'm afraid. I'm not ready to leave you and mom. If I was the father, I would say, you be quiet. We paid $10,000 for your wedding. (laughs) But instead, the father who knows the heart of his daughter whispers back, yes, you can do it. You're ready. You just don't know it. I got you. I'm your daddy. People, during these challenging times, you may need to make some important decision for you, for your family, maybe something in your job. You may feel like that you can't make this decision alone, or you're afraid or not ready to make any kind of decision, whatever the outcome may be. Just imagine when you have to make any decision, and I do this all the time, just imagine that you're in prayer before you make a decision, that the Holy Spirit is holding you and rocking you in his arms and singing the Ru, Ru, Ru song. And then you hear a gentle whisper, whatever you got to do, Yes, you can do it. You're ready. You just don't know it yet. I got you. I'm your father. And I'd never abandon you. Just turn to the Holy Spirit and rest in him so that whatever decisions you have to make, that you will know that it is the right decision because no longer do you feel anxious, confused, or alone that for some reason you let your control to be in the hands of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And all the time, So if I start taking a nap, you'll know why. Let us stand. And so, dear, in this Easter times, I ask you what you believe in. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom as a child of God? Do Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may never enslave you? Do Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, whose only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith in which we hold on to, the faith that defines us ever since our baptism through Christ our Lord. And so let us turn to our loving and merciful and forgiving Father and ask him to hear all our needs through the Holy Spirit. For us, the Church of OPH, As disciples of Jesus, may we be empowered by the Holy Spirit. In the Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For nations seeking peace and harmony in the world, in the Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our CIA catechumens and candidates preparing to receive new life through the waters of baptism and the Easter Eucharist, May they stay the course and prepare their hearts for the Lord. In the spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the physically, emotionally, and spiritually paralyzed and lame, may they be cured through the love and mercy of Jesus. In the spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For ourselves, the community of LPH being called to live in Christ, May we be the face of Christ with gentleness and reverence to all. 
In the spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the prayer intentions of our parish community that have been submitted to all PH prayer warriors, in the spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those that have died, especially our relatives, and for their loved ones and friends, in the spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for any prayers that we may have at this time in the silences of our hearts, any prayer that we want to beg God to hear, there's no prayer too small or no prayer too big for God to handle. In the spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord God, we know you care for us, and you have sent us your advocate to give us strength, wisdom, comfort, and counseling. Hear our prayers and enable us to reveal your love and life to all the earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We may be seated for the offertory. We will not have the regular offertory. Instead, when you come to receive communion, you'll have the basket there on the side, and we'll talk about that later. Bless you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the earth fruit of the vine and work of our human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours here on this holy altar may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and even pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who never who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy and to be glorified O God who loves the human race and who always walks with us on the journey of life blessed indeed is your son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread therefore father most merciful we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessings, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Lord and my God, have mercy on us. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit, 
Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Pope Francis, with our Bishop Michael, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times, but the light of faith may constantly be devoted to you and to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may, be faithfully, we may faithfully bring them to the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her spouse, St. Joseph, with the apostles and martyrs, St. Demphna, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory the kingdom, Christ. the power, and the glory are yours. Now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Christ one day bring you and me to everlasting life. Once again, we're, we will have first this side to, that is going to receive the body of Christ, just this section, and then the Eucharistic minister will give the body of Christ to the choir and to that section. Once I finish this section, then I'll move to this side to give the body of Christ to this area. Once I move to this area, then the Eucharistic minister will move over here. And whatever y'all do, whatever, I don't care. I don't know. Mystery of faith, calling us to venture to the deep. And though our senses fail, your grace is still prevail, and we become the love that we receive.
mystery of faith, calling us to venture to the deep. And though our senses fail, your grace is still prevail, and we become the love that we receive. together for those who are watching on Facebook our act of spiritual communion and so let's pray together my Jesus I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul since I cannot now receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart as though you have already come I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we restore who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ. Increase in us, we pray, 
the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. We may be seated for our announcements. Life Teen High School Youth Group will be having a virtual meeting on Zoom Sunday, May the 17th at 7.15 p.m. The Edge Middle School Youth will be having a virtual meeting on Zoom on Monday, May the 18th at 7.15. So that's tonight and tomorrow night. Please read today's bulletin for information regarding meeting ID number and password for the Zoom meetings. I found out you can't get on there if you don't have that password. Oh, well. <laughs> OLPH Food Pantry will be open Wednesday, May the 20th from 1 to 3 p.m. We will have a drive through service available. What a blessing for all those who are having a hard time right now, my brothers and sisters. Thank you on behalf of the parish and all those people that need our assistance for what we give. We invite you to join our OLPH deacons, of which I am one of them, in praying the rosary Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. and Saturday and Sundays at 6.30 on Facebook Live. Every Thursday, we will be having Eucharistic Adoration on Facebook Live at 8 p.m. Join us as we come together and worship in song and prayer before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Again, the OLPH Food Pantry needs have increased. Please read today's bulletin on how we can help those in most need of our community. We have a printed list of food items that are most needed for the pantry. Also, after this nine o'clock mass, this mass will be on Facebook and on YouTube channel around 10 o'clock or 10.30 uh, to share with your family and friends. And also, if you're able to give your tithing to the church, please do so either online or mailing in through the envelope or here at the church or dropping them in the office. After Mass, Deacon and I will be there on the side. And if you can keep the physical distancing, we're going to be passing out the blessed palm branches that we did for Palm Sunday. We blessed the palm branches. And a lot of parishioners made the palm. We knew that they're going to shrivel up. And so we asked them to make the palm branches into little crosses. And so we have all the palm branches that were blessed on Palm Sunday. They made them into little crosses. And so we'll hand you two or three palm branches, either to put above your door uh, of the entrance and the back door, uh, or with my family, we put the palm branches uh, in between the mattresses, but we were a different family. I don't know about that. But, <laughs> but to do that as well. And I think that's the whole idea of, of just being... Uh, blessed when we sleep with the angels. The Lord be with you. May the blessings of Almighty God be upon each and every one of you. In the name of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And we ask for you to leave as soon as we leave. And you can leave out the both doors there in the front. But please follow the six feet dis distancing. And if there's anyone who can stay afterwards to help uh, sanitize the church for the 11 o'clock mass, that's very much appreciated. And those people go straight to heaven. <laughs> God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Yeah.